Close your eyes and gather all your attention right here. All your thoughts, all your anticipations, all your memories. Make them relevant to the breath. In other words, your memories. You've learned how to meditate in the past. Remember what lessons you've learned about where you like to focus, what kind of breath is good. And then remember to stay here. And as for thoughts, as they come up, you decide which thoughts are relevant to the breath and which ones are not. The thoughts that ask, what kind of breathing feels good right now? What kind of breathing is right for the body? What kind of breathing is right for the mind? Anything that's not related to that, you can just let it go, let it go. And then, of course, there's your awareness. You want to be specifically alert to what you're doing right now. And there are a lot of other things you can be aware of right now, the sound of the birds, the sound of the construction every now and then. But that's not shaping your life. What's shaping your life are the decisions you're making right now. And you really want to be sensitive to those. Because all too often our attention is someplace else, and our decisions get put on automatic pilot. And depending on how the automatic pilot was designed, the decisions may be skillful, maybe not. But the fact that you're not really there means you don't really know. You've abandoned quality control. The mind is like a, a factory that doesn't stop. Even when you're asleep, it turn, turns out dreams. But when you're awake, you have to take some responsibility for the things it turns out. Because thoughts don't just arise and then vanish into thin air. They come back, and they come back, and the more they come back, the more you're inclined to want to act on them. As the Buddha said, they bend the mind in their direction. So you want to get your mind unbent. You want to have it stay right here, solidly right here focused on what you're doing. So that the quality control in your factory is reliable. And you can really shape something good out of your life. This is one of the Buddha's discoveries, is that we have play a huge role in shaping our lives. And if you find there was suffering over something, you can ask yourself, well, what am I doing? That was his example, when he was looking for awakening. He didn't have any guidance. His only guidance was his ability to look at his actions and look at their results, see the connection between them, and then realize, okay, certain actions are not giving good results. Why am I continuing to do them? Why don't I try something else? Then he would use his ingenuity to come up with something new and give that a try. Pay full attention to what he's doing so he could see the connection between cause and effect, and then learn how to adjust it. And that's how he was able to find the path to the end of suffering. Now, he can't take us there, but he can show us the path. He said, this is how you do it. And it's through this process of questioning, what am I doing right now? Is it skillful? Is it not? And if I'm not getting good results, what can I do to change? That's how we learn. That's how we explore things and how we discover things. And that's what we're trying to do here, is to discover the path that the Buddha followed. He was the first to follow it. We have to discover it within ourselves. And it starts with this process of gathering your mind together right here and watching very carefully what you're doing and the results, and then deciding whether they're good enough or not. The Buddha said the secret to his awakening was that he didn't rest content, even with skillful qualities. He needs to say nothing of unskillful qualities. But if there's still the least little bit of suffering, stress, even in the skillful qualities, there must be something better. There must be something better. That was how I was able to go beyond even the path. So be, watch carefully what you're doing and have really high standards for what you're going to accept. And then just keep at it. That's the lesson we learn when we read about the Buddha's path to awakening. We're coming up on the celebration of his awakening. You can think of these days as the days leading up to the awakening, as he was still trying to find the right path. In the beginning he didn't know where he was going, 
But gradually over time you began to see more and more clearly the direction things were going. So he finally arrived at a freedom from suffering it totally. He could do it, and he just said, we can do it too. So now it's up to us to see if we can prove him true or false. The only way you can do that, the only way you can do that is by <clears throat> watching very carefully what you're doing and having a clear sense of cause and effect, which comes from getting the mind really still right here. Being very alert. And using your ingenuity to come up with the best path possible. 